Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and today what I want to talk about is this new near-Earth meteor that scientists have... I okay, it's an asteroid, not a meteor. Okay. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. Today what I want to talk about is this new meteor that... No, it's not a meteor, it's in space. It's an asteroid. Hey YouTube, this is Practice Prepper. Today what I want to talk about is this new near-Earth asteroid that scientists have identified as potentially being something that could strike the planet. And it's got me really thinking that I... Uh, you messed yourself up because you were liking that take so much. Okay. Like the take. Don't get all giddy about it. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. Today what I want to talk about is something that's just coming onto my radar now, which is the news about this near-Earth asteroid that may actually hit the Earth. Scientists have just identified it just a couple days ago, and it's either going to hit or pass really close to the Earth, and it has me thinking about all the things that I'm unprepared for, all the things that I've had years and years to, you know, prepare on my end, and... And now I'm feeling like, oh, geez, you know, I have all these holes. I thought I had so many bases covered. And, uh, what's that? No, okay. I'll check it later. Hi. Hey, YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. Today, what I want to talk about... Ah! What? Have you seen the news? Just tell me what the news story is. Don't be secretive. Okay, I'll check it later. Hi. Hey YouTube, this is Practice Prepper. Today what I want to talk about is this new discovery of a near-Earth asteroid that may actually hit the planet Earth and... Ah! What? Dude, did you see the video? Okay, now I'm kind of curious. So ...now saying on record that the object we're seeing in these video images is without question some sort of spacecraft. The key evidence of this, aside from the apparent visual image, is the fact that the unknown object is now confirmed to be decelerating as it approaches our planet. At this moment, NASA officials claim that the only two possibilities present are that this object was either built in secret by some group on Earth, or that it is truly from another world. If the latter, this would represent the first proof positive of the existence of intelligent extraterrestrial life, and NASA is stating that the notion that this craft may yet be discovered to have been human-built is highly unlikely. Okay, so it's not a meteor, it's a spaceship. That's, uh, As of this moment, the story that's either better or worse. The world There's no mistaking it, though. That is a spaceship. Look at that. Hey, YouTube. This is Praxis Prepper, and today is the first day that the entire planet is fixated on only, only one thing, which is aliens. It's all you can see on the news. Uh, yesterday, we had that tiny little shot of a spaceship coming in through space, which, you know, had everyone crazy. And then late last night, there were two that actually came down to Earth. One was over in, in Paris. The other was in New York. I somehow managed to get about four hours of sleep. Uh, and I woke up this morning and there have been six more. And, and uh, yeah, it's been, it's been kind of crazy. It's, I, I, I gotta admit, I'm not as shocked as I thought I would be. Maybe just because I've seen so many movies, uh, you get kind of used to it. Especially, it's like, the aliens seem to be following the Hollywood stereotype, too. It's like New York, Paris, L.A. they got to be near Hollywood, of course. <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe they just maybe they saw our films and they're kind of like, well, this is where they're expecting us, so we should arrive there. I don't know. There could be hundreds over the oceans that people don't even know about they haven't seen yet. But anyway, there's eight right now. And Oh, what's this? I've had this uh, thing on, just getting... This is the emergency broadcast okay, system. Like the same. It's been going on Take all shelter night. immediately. It's probably the same one over. Take and shelter over. immediately. This is not a test. Unidentified aircraft have been confirmed in the skies over Los Angeles, Los Alamos, New York, Boston, and other locations. It's not the same. I think it's the same. No information on these aircraft is known at this time. The origin of these aircraft is suspected to be extraterrestrial. The intention of these beings is unknown. Extreme caution is advised. If you encounter an extraterrestrial or extraterrestrial technology, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's the same you are advised to avoid time. contact. And Hasn't changed or anything. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of words there, but I think for anyone who's a, a non-prepper, I think it all boils down to one word. Panic. <laughs> Which is why it's nice to be a prepper right now. I mean, I really haven't had that much to do. 
the past, you know, 12 hours or so. Uh, I mean, people have been going crazy in the cities, mobbing grocery stores and everywhere else. There's looting going on, people trying to get supplies, you know, it's like getting ready for a hurricane times a million right now. But, uh, you know, you know for, for us, for preppers, you know, we just kind of sit back and to some extent just enjoy the show. It's been really interesting. Uh, and people have dreamed about this for such a long time, and now it's happening, and it's just kind of weird. So, yeah, that's been going on today, too. These uh, fighter jets have been flying over. This sounds like more of them than before, though. Let's, let's check it out. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of interesting. fighter jets. A lot of them. These are all, they're, they're heading west, right? In a hurry to get somewhere. Do they know something I don't? Oh, shit. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and today is day two since the world found out that extraterrestrials are real and they are here now. Just yesterday, I was rolling video and heard some fighter jets flying overhead, so I went out to get a shot of that, and then, like, up in space or something, there was this giant explosion, which I, I looked at for just a tiny, tiny second, and then remembered to look away, uh, and got inside, and, uh, immediately, all the power went out to the whole house, like, the, the, at least the local grid went down. I heard some booms, like, off in the distance. I don't know if those were bombs, or I, they, maybe Transformers exploding, or I don't know. I don't know, electronic stuff, but I'm not sure exactly what's going on because I have no way of getting news or information, but it seemed like an EMP and all the power is out. So that's why I have a Faraday cage next to me. And this one worked, as evidenced by the fact that I'm recording with a camera right now. Obviously, I've already been in here and I checked and the stuff in here survived. The camera I'm rolling on was in here. Let's go through some of it. Uh, I've got a lantern. I have one small solar panel, a uh, shortwave world band radio. Uh, here's some more radios, these are just handheld radios for communication. A flashlight that does work. Got two of these, two extra backup, backup cameras so I can keep <laughs> recording videos and things with their batteries and power supplies in there. I put one of these in there. This is a inverter that like you can run off of a car battery and my understanding and it seems to be the case so far, I checked my, my solar panel battery bank downstairs, is that those deep cycle lead acid batteries are not really that affected by EMP pulses. They seem to have survived, and I should be able to, even though like all my other like inverters and stuff like that got fried in my basement, I've got a backup one, I can run off that. And as long as some of my panels remained, I can kind of keep those uh, those batteries hot and cooking and I can I can run some stuff if I need to. I checked everything with a multimeter. I have a little electronic multimeter and that's it. I guess what I, my, my next plan is that I need to charge up all these batteries and... Okay, yeah, that's somebody knocking at the door. That's why we have this. Uh, I mean, it's probably just someone from the neighborhood, but let's check it out. Why am I bringing the camera with me? It's like a horror movie. People making bad decisions. Hello? Hello? Well, that's a good sign. Hello? Uh, yeah, yesterday I was doing my video. I never, I'm sorry, I never got back to finish it up. Um, because someone was knocking at the door. It just turned out to be Warren, my neighbor, uh, who wanted water. I mean, it had only been like, what, 24 hours since, I don't know, whatever, the EMP or what I, pre what I presume was an EMP went off, uh, you know, which means his well wasn't working, uh, and he was already without water. So, yeah, um, I showed him how to purify his own water. I think that that was better for both of us. Uh, now he knows how to purify his own water, so that's good for him, and it's good for me because, you know, he's not going to be dependent on me. Um, 
probably are going to have to depend on each other to some degree, at least just in terms of security. And, you, you know, people are not prepared to, to go that long without electricity. You know, food and water, I mean, I don't know, another 24, 48 hours, shit's going to start getting real. And, you know, there might be looters. You know, we live in kind of a rural area, but, you know, you don't know. So, so we just chatted about that, you know, kind of keeping an eye on each other, watch each other's back, you know. At least in terms of that, you're stronger with two than one. So, so we talked about that a little bit. Uh, and what is that? I don't. That's not fighter jets. Oh, fuck. A new noise. Let's go check it out. Oh, every day is so exciting now. This is awesome. Except not at all. Let's see. Oh God, it's loud. It's loud. Holy It's just starting to get real, yo. Today's day four since um, all this shit started happening, and I'll be honest, I think at this point I'm starting to think it might not actually be a massive Chinese hoax. Maybe the, the enormous ship flying over my house yesterday uh, instilled that in me a little bit. Uh, after, I, uh, after it went over my uh, you know, immediate yard, I followed it through the woods for a little while to see where it was going. I, you know, I, Honestly, don't know what the hell's going on, and I shot a little video of that. Uh, I'm still following that that ship that uh, that went over the house. It's been just continuing south since it went over me. There it is, right there. I don't know. I think I, one of the things that's most frustrating about this whole thing is I just don't know what's going on most of the time. Well, at, at all, really. I, I mean, that, that thing could have just blown up some city to the north and now it's headed south to the next one, or... Again, I'm just, I'm presuming that, uh... That they're hostile, I don't know. I mean, maybe the explosion was people and... You know, the aliens are gonna cut us some slack and they're, they're going to some, you know, diplomatic meeting at Devil's Tower, Wyoming. Except Devil's Tower's to the west of here, I guess, so it wouldn't be that. I know that for certain, unless they're taking a circuitous route. I don't know, but uh, maybe I shouldn't be out in the open here, I don't know. Am I whispering too? <laughs> so they can hear me? Yeah, don't talk too loud, they'll hear you. Or maybe they can, I don't know. That's the thing, I don't know anything. Uh, I got the, the batteries charging for the radio, so uh, maybe I'll find something out. Oh, 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 hey, something's happening. Something's happening. There's something coming out of it, or something. What is that? There's something flying out of it, something little. I don't know. I wonder if they're going to come back this way. I think I'm going to go back in. The plan for today is that with the cold weather coming on, I thought it made sense to go out and do some foraging of wild edibles before you know, they get covered in snow. Uh, I have obviously all my preps uh, in you know, my pantry, but there's no reason to go diving into those if there's you know free food for the foraging you know out here. The only problem with that is that the foraging grounds are kind of kind of far from my house, and uh, I feel a little bit uncomfortable you know for security reasons leaving leaving my house. Uh, we're really getting into the time period where we might start to expect you know, looters or you know wandering desperate people to becoming and, you know, just looking for shit. So uh, I, what I worked out with my neighbor, Warren, is that he's going to come and kind of position himself roughly between our houses, keep an eye on things back here, and I'm going to split half of the, the wild uh, foraging stuff that I'm able to get uh, with him. So uh, he, he should be over here in a couple minutes. All right, so Warren's holding down the fort, and we're going to head out into the, the woods and find some, some food. And, oh, here's something here. This is good. This is, uh, I think it's some kind of a, an oregano. This is a mint family plant, and all mint family plants 
have these squarish stems. If you kind of hold the stem and roll it in your your fingers, you can feel that it's 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 not round. It's a it's a square going all the way up, and they also have these uh, alternating leaves that, that go in one direction and then the next leaves go in the other direction and they alternate as they go up. It's really uh, obvious in something like basil, which is also another mint family plant. But these guys here are going to be great. I'm going to grab these. Check it out. This right here is plantain. And I'm sure you've probably seen these before. They've got these little... Uh, see that little fiber coming through? They've got these really strong veins that run through the leaves and they send up a stalk with a bunch of little flowers on them. This is good stuff. This isn't, what we found kind of so far is a lot of uh, like aromatic stuff, you know, you use for teas or flavoring, but this stuff is actual food. So we're going to grab these guys. The way that I got into wild edibles was a few years ago I just started learning a few at a time and you might think that you know you run a risk of poisoning yourself that way but really there are some very easy ones to identify and once you become comfortable with those you don't have to really worry about uh, you know toxic plants as long as you stick to what you know and then I just added to my knowledge over time. Uh, yeah, what is that? Okay, okay, okay. That's those, that's those little, little fucking things. Okay. Um, I, I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get the hell out of here because I don't, uh, I don't know what's going on right now. I'm just going to get back to the house. I'm trying to be a little quiet because, uh, a few of those little probe things or whatever, they uh, they just flew overhead. And uh, you can just kind of see through the trees there. I saw a few fly over and uh, they headed back for the house. So I was trying to go back quietly. I don't know, hopefully they just flew over. It's getting kind of, kind of, uh, well, this, this sort of sucks, I guess. I have a, uh, I have a Glock on me, but that's like for crazy people. It's not for, uh, fucking alien probes. They're not that big though, they're like, I don't know, they look like the size of a beach ball or something. I should stop talking. I'm feeling really awesome today. It was raining this morning, which actually worked out really well for the uh, nature of the work that I had to engage myself with. Uh, it was nice to have a little bit of rain to wash me off while I was doing that. But now the sun's out and I'm feeling pretty good. I, I didn't get the best night's sleep last night because now I'm kind of on my own and I was a little nervous about that. But uh, yeah. The sun's out and I'm feeling okay today. After I dragged Warren's corpse in multiple pieces into the driveway, I went over to his house to see if I could pick through whatever he had. I didn't have super high hopes. 
just because, you know, 48 hours after the EMP struck, he was over begging up water. Uh, so I was thinking maybe I'll find some crackers or whatever. But as it turns out, Warren was a prepper. I had no idea. We we're neighbors. And, well, I mean, I didn't share with him. He didn't share with me because, uh, you know, it's, good. it's like a taboo thing, whatever. Uh, but, yeah, we were both preppers next to each other, except he isn't. Uh, he wasn't the uh, I want to have lots of food and water kind of prepper like I am. Uh, he was more of the I want to have lots of these and lots of ammunition kind of a prepper. Uh, it was an, like an AR-15 uh, with a bunch of magazines and he had a ton of ammo. He had uh, uh, some 22s and a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of 22 ammo. I guess the stuff was cheap or something. Uh, and he had another bolt-action rifle, so he was all set in that department, uh, just not in the food department. Can't eat your bullets. He kind of did end up eating a bullet in the end, though. Or a laser, I don't know. I think tomorrow I really need to get out and just sort of investigate, see what's going on, because I can't just sit in the house and wait for whatever to happen, whatever to come to me. Uh, but I feel really uncomfortable leaving the house now because I don't have anyone to watch over it. That's the thing, you know, people had all these lone wolf prepper fantasies, but you know, you only got eyes in one side of your head, and you got to sleep sometime. So it kind of sucks. But, um, well, that, anyway, that's why I was dragging Warren's cadaver out into the driveway, is what I want to do is I want to make it look like the house has already been looted. Um, so I, I kind of reassembled his pieces and put them in the driveway, and just I was just essentially making a mess with a bunch of junk to make it look like someone's already hit the house. So I'm hoping that if people come by, they're going to see the house and be like, oh, this one already got hit, why waste our time? Or just at least be grossed out by the, the dead body and, uh, and move on. But, uh, but yeah, i got to get out and i got to find out what's going on. So I'm going to do that tomorrow, I'll bring the camera with me, just see what's going on outside of my you know, immediate area. I wanted to get a really early start today because I just don't want to be out into the uh, into the night too much, and I got about four miles to walk. I still feel really apprehensive about leaving my place unguarded, but if I want to check out what's going on in the area, I, I don't have much choice in that regard. I'm nervous I'm going to get there and it's going to be like a warlord state, and it's all gone like Lord of the Flies. <laughs> of course, it's only been like a week, so I don't know about that. Uh, in terms of defense. I just brought my Glock, and that might seem kind of foolish because that AR-15 that Warren had is a, a much better weapon in a lot of ways, but uh, I'm just not that familiar with it. Um, I, I mean, I can load it and fire it, but if it jams, I just really don't, you know, I could probably figure out how to get it unjammed, but I don't know. I just don't have that fam much familiarity with it. Now I feel uncomfortable you know, going trying to test it or anything, because I start firing it, you know, practicing and whatnot, you know, it's going to be really calling attention to myself. So I kind of wish I did a little bit more practice back when it, it wasn't dangerous to do the practice. But, yeah, overall, though, I just, I feel really uncomfortable, because I just don't know what to expect. I decided to take the backwoods to, uh, to get to town instead of taking any roads. I wanted to stay off the roads as best I could. Took me a little longer, but I think it was a good idea. I had to cut through one wide open field, which made me kind of nervous because I could see some of the big ships way off in the distance, nothing nothing local. But here I am, I'm at the the edge of the kind of the village green down here. That's like the kind of, the, I can see the commercial district across the field. And uh, what's disturbing me is that as I was coming in, I was hearing a lot of gunshots. Uh, which I guess didn't really bother me at first until I realized I wasn't hearing any alien laser blasts or whatever the hell those things are. So, yeah, it's just it's just gunshots. So this is this is people fighting with other people here. Uh, yeah, I joked it, it was going to be like Lord of the Flies when I got down here, and uh, you know I haven't seen anyone walking around with a dead pig head on a on a spear, but uh, yeah, that's what they said. You know, people are nine meals away from going savage, right? And here we are. Now, you know, if the, if the people in this town had been preppers, we wouldn't have this problem right now. But now this is a problem because whoever's in there clearing everything out is gonna make bigger and bigger circles once they exhaust everything in town. And 
sooner or later we're going to cross paths. So I'm going to get confronted with this at some point. So I got to figure out. I got to figure out how to deal with that. Um, I'm feeling okay right here, right now, because there's not been anybody coming across the green. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just hearing it from. Okay, there, well, there's someone coming out, but I think they're going to stay in town because that's where all the stuff is. I, okay, they're kind of walking this way, but still, I, I think I'm okay here because they're. Yeah, I'm behind the bushes. I don't think they're going to be able to see. Okay, okay, they totally see me. All right. Today is day eight of the whole alien shit thing. Um, I did not sleep well last night at all. Um, it was just, well, obviously we got a, an ice storm last night and, you know, the ice was coming in and it's like every breaking branch out in the woods you can hear outside. You know, I'm just wondering, is that some dude coming up at the house? I don't want to be sexist. It could be a, a horrifying woman too. I don't know, but uh, I think maybe I got three, maybe four hours of sleep out of like nine last night. You know, it just sucks because, you know, if you had an extra person, you know, you know that they'd have it covered so you could just kind of relax, but you just, every little noise, you know, you're just wondering like, oh, is that somebody, whatever. So, yeah, um, yeah, I didn't sleep well last night. And, uh, Tonight's probably going to be the same, you know? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Not feeling awesome today, but it's beautiful out this morning. It's really, really nice. you got this ice storm, like I was saying. It's just gorgeous, but it uh, just sucks. <laughs> uh, before all this happened, I'd had some supplies for doing, uh, you know, trip sensors and things like that. And uh, I've been setting those up, uh, running wires out uh, to different uh, locations around here. You know, people pass through a certain area, uh, there'll be a, a sensor that'll, uh, that'll flick off and I can get a sense whether somebody's coming through. Of course, you get tripped by a branch or an animal or anything too, but yeah, I'm doing that today. And, uh, uh, and then I'm going to do some fortifications inside the house as well. There were a number of areas where I'm setting up these trip lines, but uh, this area is a little bit more challenging than some of the others. Uh, going across a road, pretty obvious. There's some other paths that I have around my house. Uh, but this area here is pretty wide and it's under a canopy of uh, trees that are dropping a lot of debris. And the whole area is like this. Uh, so I'm, I'm nervous that I'm going to get a lot of fa uh, false alarms off of this one. But uh, it's an important area because it is a major way for people to come from the, the backwoods. There's a state park back there. Uh, and come through this area. This area connects with a lot of trails in the state park. And this is a particularly good spot because it's, it's a place where it really funnels down. If I try to set up the lines anywhere else, I'd have to really go across large, large areas. This is about as narrow as it gets. There's a hill on this side, and on this side over here, uh, there's kind of a creek that runs through, so, and there's a very natural path. So if people are gonna be coming through, I think they're gonna be coming through this area. So despite the fact that I have a lot of branches to kind of fall here, it's really the most sensible place to be putting anything. What I've done here is I've uh, run the wire down from the hill up there all the way down here and I use Romex, kind of a, a heavy gauge wire to get down here because we're just using 12 volt uh, signals and uh, DC current over long stretches, you know, loses its, uh, its oomph. So, so I was trying to use some, uh, some heavier gauge wire just to get down here. But then I've got this thin wire once I get down into the area. I've uh, put down a, a stick here, I've wrapped the uh, 
the clothespin with the wire around the stick and uh, kind of flip the wire around the clothespin once to kind of as a, as a tension relief. And now I've got my uh, you know, plastic piece that goes right into the middle there and my uh, monofilament line that I'm going to run across here. And again, hopefully the idea is it's a natural funneling sort of area with hillside and wetlands and things like that. I think this is where people are going to come through. And I've got to repeat this at all the other locations as well. An important element of this whole alarm system that I've set up is the ability for me to actually respond if one of my sensors gets tripped. It's not going to notify the police. I'm not going to call 911. I actually have to personally do something about that. And uh, what I've done uh, along those lines is uh, right behind my bed, you know, where I sleep, I set up that piece of cardboard with all the lights on it. So if I get woken up in the middle of the night, I can quickly assess where things are. I actually used uh, as a stand for it, I'm, I'm balancing it up on top of uh, my old V-Line gun safe. I'm not really using the gun safe anymore just because, I mean, you know, the world gets invaded by aliens, you know, shit changes. <laughs> I'm, I'm just keeping the pistol up there. Uh, but uh, this way I can really quickly assess the situation. And it's important that you... Oh, something's going off. It's the one by the big pine tree that's, that's down that way. Okay, uh, it's freaking freezing. I'm going to grab the pistol and, uh, I guess, put a coat on and check it out. I just got an alert off of the, uh, the sensor down in the valley by the large tree, and I'm going to check it out. That's the one I was thinking, you know, might have been prone to false alarms, but, uh, you know, i got to presume that it's real, so going down to check that out now. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, it's just a stick here. Let's see, uh... Okay, there's the uh, piece. All right, so I'll just run this back over here again and we'll clip it back in and I don't know, I hope this thing doesn't keep me up all night going false alarm every 10 minutes. Coming back, I, I saw these two really, two giant things flying overhead. It's going off again. Jeez, what is it? Yeah, it's just the same thing again. I'm just going to go run and reset the trip line. My concern with these trip wires is that, especially with all the snow falling off the trees, there just seems to be a lot of false positives, false alarms going on. But I don't see as I have any other choice other than just to reset them. So, can I help you? Still dicking around with cameras? No, oh, I'm actually mildly glad to see her. Oh, good, because the last time I saw you, you said it was a pleasure to work with me. Sounds fine, I suppose. You said pleasure in air quotes. So am I going to have to shoot you and take all your stuff, or are we going to go talk? Let's go with option two, I suppose. This is Monica, and obviously we do know each other. Uh, you know what they always say, uh, when the shit hits the fan, I'm showing up at your house. And we had a little bit of that going on here today. Uh, she was my employer, uh, kind of. I was a freelancer, and I did some video work for her. Well, you work at a grocery store? A it's grocery the store second chain? largest food distribution channel in New England. Okay, yeah, the grocery store. Now there's finally two of us, and you do crazy things like sleep occasionally, and we can take shifts and things. So uh, it is nice that you're here. Welcome. Thanks. But it's still a little awkward. Monica's upstairs right now, just getting generally cleaned up. She hasn't been able to bathe or anything for the past week or so, and that's just not good for your skin to let it get sweaty and dirty and everything. So she's trying to clean up, but she does have a really nasty leg infection. Now, I think that if she had had, you know, a grab-and-go bag or anything like that on her with some basic medical supplies, when she had gotten that scrape injury, she could have cleaned it off right away. But she didn't have that, you know, it reminds me of the, the story of the grasshopper and the ant, you know. She was the grasshopper not preparing, and I guess I'm the ant, and uh, she knew where to come to. Uh, I guess I could be resentful about that, you know, like, she wasn't putting the effort in to prepare. You know, at the, at the moment, we're really in a position to help each other out, because, you know, she needs all the supplies that I've accumulated, and 
and I really need another person. So whether or not she's deserving or not, I'm better off with her. So, uh, and I, I, you know, honestly, just as a human being, you don't want to turn people away. So I'm glad I have a legitimate reason not to turn her away because I, I wouldn't want to do that anyway. But I really need her. I need this, another set, set of eyes. You just can't do this by yourself. I mean, I had such a shit at, that's probably why I, I, been overly ridiculous today. I just did not sleep at all last night, and I need, I need to have another person here so I we can take shifts and 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 do it like that. So anyway, I'm glad that I have her strength now, her eyes now, uh, and it's just it's nice that I have another person here. So I want to keep her alive and not dying from her leg infection. So I've got some uh, this uh, doxycycline, which I actually used on my leg once, which worked really well. So uh, we've got these. You know, they're fish antibiotics, but, you know, they work for people. So I've got, got that for you. Thanks. Do we have to film this right now? Oh, well, you know, just, just in case. Just, just in case. It's just my thing. The internet comes back. Okay. Yeah. How's it going? Um, it's pretty rough. Uh, it's bruised and there's a lot of scrapes. The cut is really bad and I didn't clean it properly. Well, it is infected, I guess. Yeah. 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 Okay, so why did you come here? <clears throat> well, I, I, it's not like I'm right next door. It must you must have had to walk a bit. Yeah. Well, the last time I saw you, you were taking all this food out of our store because. Okay. Well, I bought that food actually. I paid for all of that at an awesome employee discount. Yes, they, and they it extended was all non-perishable. So yeah, that's you a, know put two and two together. Well, it's worked out, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So I um, I was heading to the store myself and uh, there was a, a large group of looters there. Um, so I, I couldn't go and get any food for myself. And I found your address on the W-9 that I had on file for you. And um, I started heading this way. Places to get food, and fortunately, I stole from a car. I was near the power lines a couple of miles away from here and these in the sky uh, these turd burglars are just flying at me so fast and I freaked out and ran as fast as I could and this is of course when I got this wonderful cut and scrapes here and I just stayed in the woods primarily the rest of the time uh, the cover was pretty good and then um, a little bit closer maybe um, two miles or so from here, there was uh, a bunch of different bands of people. Um, you know, they all had guns. It was pretty scary. Yeah, actually, um, I ran into one of those myself. He, he did not impress me with his intelligence, actually. The, the only reason I'm still alive is because he was a major moron and was just sort of... Okay, these people are organized and they're coming. So today is day nine since the whole fiasco happened and based both on my experience with that ridiculous crazy person chasing me through the woods the other day and perhaps Monica had something to do with this decision, we've decided it would be a really good idea to have some sort of a, a plan B if we need to flee the house or maybe leave and can't come back for some reason. So we're going to bury an emergency stash. Now I've got this five gallon plastic bucket. Do you? Recognize that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you stole it from my job. Well, I, and paid for it at the same time. One of the great things about buying things in bulk is that you can oftentimes get really great containers off of them. In fact, oftentimes when I am making a purchasing decision, I'll make the decision based on what packaging I think might actually be 
useful after the fact. I know a lot of times when I buy things in glass jars, I'll, like pasta sauce or something like that, uh, I'll look and see whether or not this is a glass jar that I could reuse can for canning later, because then you kind of get like a free can or a free, really smart. a free bucket. Yeah, it is pretty smart, isn't it? Uh, but we're going to be using this today for our emergency stash, which we'll take outside into a place pretty far away from the house and bury. Now, this bucket, it does have a gasket on the top, and it's going to be reasonably watertight, but, you know, I wouldn't trust it over years, but I think we're thinking more about, like, whether we get chased out of the house tomorrow or in 10 minutes from now or next week. You know, we'll deal with next year when we get to it. Yeah, and no, I don't know if you can see it on my face in that video uh, of us filling up the bucket, but, uh, you know, all the stuff we're putting in that bucket, it's all stuff that I set aside for myself, you know, my preps and things. Uh, and suddenly, you know, my two weeks of rice in those bags is poof, one week of rice. My two weeks of beans is one week of beans. And, you know, don't get me wrong, it is absolutely critical that Monica's here. It was not at all working out with me being on my own. Having two people is so much more functional than one. I think three would actually be ideal in terms of sh uh, sleep chefs and things, but uh, I'm not necessarily wishing another person at the moment, but, uh, you know, because then I'd be down to like a third of, of all my, my preps. But, but yeah, yeah, I mean, in, in dividing all of my preps by two, it kind of hurts, you know, because I thought that I was a certain level of preparedness, and now I'm kind of realizing I'm only half that level, you know, and that kind of sucks. And I don't want to say that to Monica because you know, I'm glad that she's here and and everything. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it kind of hurts to find out that you you've done all this prepping, you've done all this setting aside of stuff. You thought you were at a certain level, and you're really only half of half of that. So I don't know. I mean, that's the whole idea of preparedness is also being able to roll with punches because you know whatever whatever plans you set up, you got to be able to to deal with uh, you know those not working out the way that you wanted. So that's where I am right now, hiding out in my in my tool shed to try to emotionally recover <laughs> from all that. So anyway, uh, I guess I'll, I'll go back to the clip of us filling up the bucket and then we gotta get that thing, get that thing hidden. So we'll put some in here. Okay, uh, yeah. Are we gonna fit all this stuff? All right, and I've got some ammunition for, I usually use the nine millimeter Glock. I'm thinking about putting this in there in case I like run out of the house and I don't have a weapon. We're about to do something really reckless, though, is I'm going to put this in here and bury it outside where nobody knows where it is except for me. And during, like, normal non-alien invasion times, that would be ridiculously reckless to do. I'm feeling like I can be cut some slack, though, because there's aliens flying around blasting everything. So I, I just feel like I would like to have that in there with some ammunition for it. I'm gonna have to really pack that in there a little bit better. What is that? Is that a new noise? I'm not sure, I haven't heard that before. Like new noises, what the hell is that? Whoa! Jesus. How far away do you think that was? I don't know, but let's get this thing buried. So it's about three in the morning. I am on watch right now, um, giving him a chance to get some rest. I want to contribute any way that I can, and so right now, I, as I said, I am taking a really long shift for watching out for anything, really. You know, if people like me can come up, then, you know, someone more skilled probably could too. Um, yeah, and, you know, I just, when I was leaving home and things were getting skinny over there, I really didn't know where to go. And so, I guess I instinctually came here, and I don't know if that's the best idea. It seems like he might have had things under control by himself. But I have heard about some government camps that they've been setting up. They're supposed to have lots of food and supplies and... They're supposed to be really safe. Maybe that would have been a better choice. Oh, what is that? I, I hear something. Today's day 10 since this whole thing started and uh, 
especially with that gigantic explosion yesterday, I think I really feel the need to start finding out what's going on in the areas around us here. Uh, Monica at the moment is uh, she's asleep. Uh, she took a super long shift last night. I feel incredibly refreshed, uh, and I just want to let her get some sleep to extend the same courtesy to her. She was super tired at the end of that. So I'm going to go over here, and we're going to try to uh, to contact somebody. We'll see. This is an FT60 radio, and we'll see what we can uh, what we can get with it. This is Praxis. Is anyone using this frequent? See, okay, that's kind of stupid. All right, let's just go. CQ, 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 calling CQ, CQ, CQ. This is Praxis. Papa Romeo Alpha X Ray India Sierra. This can take a while. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is Praxis. Papa Romeo Alpha X Ray India Sierra. Calling CQ, 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 and listening. Praxis, Praxis. This is Pepper Princess. Monica. Copy. Over. Monica. Check it out. We copy you perfectly, Prepper Princess. Good morning. Over. Awesome. Where are you located? Over. We're calling out of New England. Where are you? I'm located in the Bay Area of San Francisco. How are you holding up? Over. We're mostly just looking out for people here. Um, the ships seem like they kind of keep to themselves. Uh, we've seen those giant ones, and then there's um, the little um, turd burglars. The little yeah. Turd burglars, thank you. Um, well, I'll be on this band a lot, so if I hear anything, I'll be sharing it with you guys. Uh, so, good luck. Sounds good, Praxis. I'm going to head out and get some food. Over. Hey, folks. Prepper Princess. So, one of the great things that I had done prior to all of this happening was taking precautions. Now, I never did have the money. Not that money matters right now, but... Never did I have the money to build or, or uh, buy a Faraday cage. So what I did before this happened was I had an old microwave. We went ahead and put in it batteries, and um, I've got a radio here. And I'm also trying to get some communication going with some other groups to see uh, how things are doing on different parts of the country and, and stuff like that. So... We have been getting, luckily, still getting some eggs from our chickens. So we're really in luck with that. And um, I've also had a winter garden going. The importance of gardening, uh, even before any sort of EMP or collapse happens. So we've got plenty of greens. We've got plenty, plenty of onions. The artichokes are starting to come in. Um, we don't have any berries or fruits or anything like that, but that's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem isn't food right now because most everybody's bugged out and all the stores are empty. But we've got this. So I'm guessing that that is right over the San Francisco Bridge. That's what everybody's bugging out and worrying about. I am pretty psyched that we were able to contact Prepper Princess this afternoon. Uh, that was kind of unexpected. I, you know, I, I figured I needed to try, but. That was awesome. And the fact that we were able to reach so far suggests to me that, you know, perhaps there's even repeaters, people setting up their ham repeaters across the country. People putting things back together. That's what human beings do. You know, there's a crash, there's a collapse, people rebuild. That's in, in, in as much as it's in our nature to destroy ourselves, it's also in our nature to, uh, to rebuild and try again. Anyway, uh, Monica's uh, holding down the fort back at the house, literally. Anyhow, I, I figured I'd come out here up to the top of this hill and uh, see if I could throw a signal maybe even a little farther, uh, being up here. Uh, I didn't come out as unprepared as I oftentimes do, though. I, I've got my uh, everyday carry bag with me in case something happens, and I have a Glock on me, and there's a round in the chamber. <laughs> so, uh, Praxis learns. Uh, so yeah, up here I figured we can get a, a signal maybe a little bit farther. It's nice that people are rebuilding. I wonder how the aliens feel about that, though. I presume that the point of the EMP was to knock us out. And here we are, crawling back like cockroaches. I wonder if I should lock the stuff up in the uh, Faraday cages whenever I'm not using it, probably, in case they try to do another EMP to knock us down again. Okay. This could take a while. You know what? Actually, I can... I wasn't really legally able to do this when the FCC was still in existence, but I could... Turn up the power a little here and see, see what we got. 
All right. I know that sound. That's not a good sound. I'm just gonna move at it. Okay, we'll do this later. Flipping that off. Holy shit. I sort of have the impression that was aimed at me. Or this, maybe. Today's day 11 since this whole fiasco started and I'm pretty sure about that number. I'm pretty sure it's 11. Before I started recording, couldn't remember whether it's 11 or 12. I think 11 though. I should probably start keeping track of that. I mean, just to know what day of the year it is. I mean, you know, so you know when the seasons are starting. I mean, look, well, just look around, like right here. I, I mean, it was like two days ago, major snow and ice storm. And then last night there was crazy rain. It melted pretty much everything. I mean, there's a few little patches here and there, but uh, melted pretty much everything. I didn't capture any of that water though, uh, because I'd already dis dismantled my, uh, my water collection, my, my roof collection system and everything. Cause you know, we're into the, time of year when I could get freezes and that would burst all the pipes on that thing so I wasn't able to take advantage of any of that but I still need water I mean that's the thing in a crisis is you got kind of two things safety security and acquiring resources for yourself you know doing the best I can with the safety and security <laughs> part of it and uh, and now I got to get some water uh, what this is right here I've installed this when I built my house uh, this is just a PVC pipe that goes down like four feet into the ground or so and there's a little stream that comes along here. And actually, when I first got here, I just kind of sat to kind of listen, see if I could hear any people in the area or anything, know whether it was safe to kind of do this. And it's just really peaceful right here. And it was nice, I mean, just taking that moment, just listening to the babbling brook and the forest around, you know. I don't know, it's kind of grounding again to, uh, to be out here. The water doesn't know that aliens have invaded. <laughs> so... That's kind of nice. But anyway, I need to get some of this water. Um, uh, specifically, this is just going to be for bathing and stuff like that. We still have the uh, hundreds of gallons of water in the house for drinking. Uh, eventually, that's going to run out. Uh, and, you know, we could acquire drinking water from here. But for right now, this is just for, you know, hygiene kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, I've got this PVC pipe that goes down into the ground. Again, only four feet. So the water out of here is not safe for drinking or anything. The reason I did this is because, you know, whenever you're camping, you, you might bring a, a water pump or something and you, you know, kind of throw it into the stream. There's always kind of, uh, you know, muck and things like that at the bottom. I made this so that water can kind of accumulate in here, uh, kind of clean itself out, have some of the particulates come out. And then if I wanted to further filter this for drinking, it, you know, I wouldn't be clogging up my filter so much. What I'm going to be using here is just, uh, this is a simple pump that is uh, for like travel trailer stuff. I think like pumping anti antifreeze. Makes you appreciate just having running water in your house, I think. I brought the warm water that I heated up out on the parabolic solar cooker here into the house and now I'm ready to wash myself up with it. Just kind of start from the top and, and then go down from there because now the water is kind of going down my body. It's pre-moistening everything below me. Normally I would do this with the shower curtain closed so I'm not splashing outside the tub here, but um, I'm not gonna do that because then you couldn't see anything. It wouldn't be much of a video. I wanted to interrupt my sexy shower scene so that I could share with people what Monica and I have been doing in terms of flushing the toilet. You know, we go outside as much as possible, but in the middle of the night, it's kind of uncomfortable to do that. So we have been using the toilet, but we're not flushing it with the regular flushing device because that would refill the tank and be flushing with clean, fresh drinking water. And where that's kind of a precious resource right now, I don't want to be doing that. What we have been doing is just flushing it with buckets of water. This is an empty five gallon bucket. And all, all, all you do, this bucket here is full of water, is 
Lift up both seats so you don't splash. That's courteous. Pick it up and there's really not much to it. You pour water in and it creates the gravity siphon. It clears the whole thing out and it's been working really, really well. All right, so let's get back to that sexy shower scene. Oh, this feels really nice. All right, so I'm collecting a lot of water down in the bottom, but is uh, if you can see in the pot here, I, I'm not using very much water. I'm kind of almost done washing myself up, and I've probably used, I don't know, maybe a cup of water. Yeah, I'm going to wash down there, too. <laughs> um, and uh, it's a, just a very efficient way of getting yourself clean. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use probably all this water just to kind of use it up. Or maybe I'll share some of it with Monica. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I don't feel like I really need it. And this is just, like I said, like a liter, maybe two liters of water. And it feels like way overkill. And in a world where everything has such razor sharp margins now, with we only have so much food, we only have so much water, we only have so much this, so much that, it feels kind of nice to have a surplus once in a while. Once you do get your body clean, it's important to keep it clean by not jumping back into the same dirty clothes that you were wearing earlier. If you do, it's sort of like sleeping with someone you find out has an STD. You go to the STD clinic, get it taken care of, and then you sleep with the same goddamn person again. Wash your clothes. And that's what we're going to do right here in front of me. I have two buckets. Uh, one of them has soapy water. One of them has more clean water. Uh, and here's a pile of laundry. And we're going to be moving things through here and cleaning them up. Washing laundry is really not that big a deal. Of all the things that you know, are kind of a pain in the butt when, you know, the machinery breaks down, the grid goes down and all that. Washing laundry is actually pretty, pretty easy and straightforward. First thing I'm going to do is just take laundry, put it in here, get them pre-soaking. Nylon is a great uh, material for, you know, camping and anything like that, because when you do wash things like this, nylon dries really quickly. Let's see, what are those? Huh. I don't remember wearing these. Hmm. All right, so that all goes in there. And now I'm just rinsing them off, just getting the soap off of it. I'll take the nylon out first. Squeeze it all out. And I've just got a rack right here next to me. There we go, throw it up like that. I could put these out on a clothesline or something, but I'm just kind of doing it in here. I don't want to necessarily have clothes, fresh clothes out on the line. I think that would attract attention. So I'm kind of doing it in the greenhouse here. So I'll get this one up out of here. Okay, I'm gonna throw this one up and then what I think I want to do is go and, and check on that chip outside just to, I mean, I'm getting kind of used to it, but I feel like I should check it out. Alright, let's see what we got. Uh, oh, there's one there. Oh, oh, wow. Wow, okay. We haven't seen that many before. Just another ordinary laundry day. Man, you know, this used to be exciting, and I'm not really getting that anymore. This is Praxis, and today is day 12 since all this craziness happened, and this morning, uh, Monica decided she wanted to clean the weapon off a little bit. Now that one of us really exactly know how you're supposed to clean this particular one, we've sort of come to the conclusion that getting dirt off itself is probably a good thing, so we're kind of doing that. Right now she's cleaning off the buttstock here, and she's scratching her leg. And oh, actually, how is your leg doing? It's been four days since she started the doxy, right? Yeah, yeah, it's doing much better. I kept with it, and you know, it still hurts a little bit, but okay. it's definitely feeling better overall. Well, that's good. That was a close yeah. call. I actually yeah. had a close call yesterday. I, it's just a minor thing, but on both hands, I got burns when I was pulling stuff off the solar oh, cooker. Oh, geez, do you have there. anything for that? Aloe or anything like that? I, you know, I actually I let my aloe plant die. Uh, it didn't seem like a big deal when I was letting it die, you know, before all this, but now I'm really kind of wishing I had that aloe because 
I don't really think I have anything down in the basement. But you have you have so much stuff. You I, must have something. I have any not, topical? I haven't organized any of that stuff. That's one of my big problems. I just buy stuff when it's on sale. I, I don't really have a good sense of what's down there. I mean, I went through it the other day, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know everything. I, I, so, I was actually thinking about my hand. I do know where there's an aloe plant. It's not here at the house, but, okay, it's... On the starting to sound like a bad idea. <laughs> okay. Well, on the edge of town, there is a school building, and I did some work there, some photography work there, and they had an aloe plant, and I can get there, I can get there with traveling through the woods 98% of the time, and I'm thinking that would be a good idea that, to have that. That really, what is... Is it really worth it get well, going out there not just for, it? Aloe's not just for burns. You can use it as a digestive aid. You can use it for, like, rashes and things like that. I mean, it's good. It's an immune booster. Uh, I don't have diabetes right now. Um, I do have a lot of sugar in the basement. So maybe I might give myself diabetes. And it's actually, I understand it's, it's helpful with diabetes. But it's something we could grow more of, and we weren't going to run out of it. So I'm thinking maybe before it dies that I could go into town. Okay, so you go into town. How are you going to get there unprotected? Well, I have a plan for that. All right, okay. there is a technique known as the gray man approach, and I think I'm going to use the gray man approach uh, to make my way there undetected, relatively, and then come back with the aloe. The gray man approach. The gray man approach. What is the gray man approach? Okay, well, the gray man. You might sound like you're a gray man, mm -hmm. but in fact, it has nothing to do with the color gray. The idea is with the gray man approach is that in the way that gray is sort of a neutral color, it doesn't mm -hmm. stand out, the gray man is the person, a man or woman, I guess it could be a gray woman as well, uh, the gray man approach is where you become very neutral and you blend in. So I'm thinking I'm not going to go in carrying something like that. I would not be a gray man. Um, I, I'll try to look just sort of unthreatening, like a random hobo. Not a, like a clown hobo, but like just a hobo that there's, I have nothing to offer anybody. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to, you know, to mug me or anything. And as a gray man, I could pass into town, come back undetected. I think I've got a pretty good shot at that. The gray man approach. The gray man approach to look like you have nothing to offer anybody. Well, be a gray man. Sounds good to you're me. Told? Yeah, yep, yeah, you you convinced me. Okay. Um, cool. while you're out, I'll go down in the basement and start organizing all that medicine so that would we actually, actually be a good know idea. what we have. I'll catalog. Okay. And everything like that. Cool. Yeah. I actually thought you were going to convince me not to do it. Now I'm feeling a little nervous about it. So I just wrapped up. I finished all this. It took me a lot longer than I thought. And about half of the medicine that um, Praxis had was actually expired. Some of it was just, you know, just past the expiration date. So I'm going to have to talk to him. I don't know which medicines are okay to consume after their expiration date. So we'll just have to check on that. Okay, I've, I've made it up to the school and I, uh, I'm just gonna kind of sneak my way up here. Those windows are, God, I can't see anything that's inside those windows, but uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hear any activity, so I'm just gonna continue up. Jesus, this is, mm, I'm not, I'm not, this is not very enjoyable. <laughs> Yeah, I don't see. It doesn't look like there's been any activity around here. It's just cleared out. Okay, just want to get myself inside. 
if it's unlocked. Is it unlocked? Yes, okay. Yeah, it doesn't even look like it's been looted. Let's see. Okay, I think it was in here. Right around here, it was in the storage room. There we go, there it is. Says, okay, okay, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Okay. Okay, now let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm getting out of here now. I'm almost home and overall I am really pleased with how this, uh, is it a mission? My mission? Uh, went off. I, uh, I now have a really valuable resource that is different from a lot of the other uh, medications and things like that that I've stocked over time because things like aspirin, ibuprofen, that, that kind of stuff, it has a, a certain shelf life and you have a certain amount of it and when it's gone, it's gone. But with this aloe, it's a very valuable medicine and I can continue it ad infinitum out into the future by you know growing more of it and that was a real score i'm really psyched about that the one thing that's got me a little bit uncomfortable is the fact that i ran into that person you know on the way out now i don't i don't think they were being disingenuous about who they were i think they're just another person in a bad situation like we all are you know trying to make things work and um i don't have any immediate reason for thinking that you know, there was something nefarious about them uh, or anything, but uh, you know, it's got me thinking, it's got me looking over my shoulder, making sure I'm not being followed back. The last thing I want is to be leading anyone back to my house. And um, that's the only kind of downside of this whole thing. I hope that I don't pay for that aloe, you know, with uh, you know, giving up my location. You know, running, running out and running an errand used to be just such a, a tiny mundane thing. It's like, yeah, I'll just run to the drugstore, pick it up, I'll be right back in five minutes. But uh, it's not like that anymore. I mean, just the tiniest thing going out, it's like strategy and gaming the thing out, and uh, it really sucks, <laughs> to be perfectly frank about it. I mean, when the shit hits the fan, things get pretty shitty. It's been 13 days since we found out about the aliens and everything, and both based on the number, 13, even though I'm not superstitious, and the fact that I went on a crazy adventure yesterday, I mean, it was good, I'm glad I got the aloe, time well spent, but that was still pretty crazy. Uh, I'm planning on just staying at home today, and I've got a good reason to, because uh, literally the morning before, you know, all the aliens were on the news and everything like that, we all found out about it, uh, Literally that morning I was at the grocery store and I, I bought a lot of produce, uh, in particular tomatoes. It was a great discount rate on tomatoes. I, I got a whole box of tomatoes and uh, both myself and Monica had been going through those, trying to eat those first because, you know, they're going to go bad first. But there's still a lot left and they're, they've gotten to the point where they, you know, they're going bad. <laughs> so uh, what I decided to do this morning is to cook them up and I'm going to preserve them and put them in, into cans. Now I've had them going on the stove for a little while here. I put in uh, tomatoes, I put in some onions. Um, what else did I put in there? I put uh, some pumpkin in there. I mixed in some pumpkin that I had uh, previously canned. Mix that in. Some salt and seasonings and stuff like that. I'm making kind of like a salsa sort of thing. I put some hot peppers in there that I had dried. So I've had that going this morning and that's going to preserve the nutrition from all those tomatoes so that I can have them later and uh, Monica and I don't have to gorge ourselves over the next three days on nothing but <laughs> tomatoes because that would uh, that would be 
dreadful. Uh, they've been cooking on here for a while. Uh, I've got them down to a, a level where I think they're ready to be canned. And the cans that I'm going to be using for them are these little jars here. Now these are just the kind of jars that you would get at a grocery store. These just to actually have salsa in them. Uh, they're New Newman salsa jars. And I have in the past had a lot of luck just using these as a big deal. Holy shit, what is that? What was that? What is it? Um, it says, be gone by sundown tomorrow, you'll both be dead. Take only one pack each. Oh, balls. Today's day 14, and uh, Monica and I have some differences of opinion on how we should deal with uh, this sort of threat that we received yesterday. Uh, you know, we got a note that said that if we aren't out by sun uh, sundown today, that uh, you know people are going to kill us. They said that we could take um, you know a pack with us, and uh, and that's that's about it. Um, at the moment, we really don't know anything. I don't know if uh, if it's just one person, you know, like that just wants us to leave. I don't know if it's a whole group. That's one of the reasons I'm out here is I'm going to be doing kind of patrols around the house. Monica's staying in there. She's going to monitor the uh, you know the trip wires that I set and everything. And I'm going to be out here. You know, it'd be good if we had more of us outside, but uh, we don't. We only have the two of us, so. I'm going to be out here and just seeing if people are kind of starting to move in, getting ready for something, because it's supposed to go down tonight. Obviously, well, the bugs are bad over here. Obviously, um, you know, Monica just wants to leave, and, you know, I don't I don't really agree with that. I'm, uh, so anyway, yeah, I'm doing patrols around here today. Monica's monitoring the house, and uh, I don't know what our end game is on this. I mean, are we just going to fight whoever is threatening us if they come in I don't know I'm not sure but at the moment doing rounds seeing if we can get a better sense of what the threat really is The sun's rising right now, and I don't want to say that last night was a waste of time, but absolutely nothing happened. I didn't hear anybody even approach the house. I don't know what the deal was, but uh, I'm just really tired. Uh, I'm heading back to the house now, and uh, you know, I guess I'll check in with Monica, and then maybe just relax a little bit and figure out what the next step is. Hey. Go ahead. Um, I just got a hold of someone on the, the radio. Oh, another one? Hmm. Y yeah, it's someone new. It's a, a group that set up a hospital in Greenville. Oh, that's not too far from here. No. How are they doing? Great. It, um, they have lots of supplies. There's a big group of them. And well, that's good. It's pretty good for them. safe. Yeah, they, have, they said they have lots of food, too. And I don't know. Would it be worth checking out? It seems like it could be a good oh, you option. Mean us to go? Yeah, they've said they could have a couple, you know, more helpful people around, and we're kind of helpful. I don't know, what was the point of accumulating all this stuff if we're just going to walk away from it at the first little stone through the, the window? My feeling, I mean, nothing happened last night even. You know, I mean, they throw the rock through, they're like, you know, it's sundown, they give us a deadline, right? And they don't show up. You know, I don't think they would have warned us that they could actually get rid of us. And, and last night kind of demonstrates it. Nothing happened. Yet. What, they, they didn't set their watches? It was sundown. That's my feeling anyway.
today's day 16 and um, nothing's happened the past three, two, three days since the rock came through. Uh, Monica just went down uh, for her sleep shift and uh, I'm on now. I, uh, I had an idea, actually, pretty cool idea. Chocolate and peanut butter together at last. It's happening. Mostly it'll just keep me awake because I'm freaking tired. But, uh, yeah, nothing's happened. So, I'm thinking it was just some some person threw a rock through. It was hoping they were going to just scare us off. And then when we didn't go anywhere, they, uh, they just gave up. So, I think it was just a bunch of nothing. Well, they would have done better to have taken a rock and thrown it through the window with a note on it that said, please help, I have kids. They're starving them. Maybe I would have given them something, but the way they went about it just didn't accomplish anything. We just made Monica and I kind of pissed and both of us super tired, which is pretty... Someone's knocking. Perfect. You know what? Thank you very much for breaking another window. I'm only gonna say this one time because I hate shouting, so listen closely. What's going on? We've been watching you, and we know that you are only one man and one woman. We also know that you have some firearms. Hey, that's a nice AR, by the way. But we also know that you don't know much about how to use them. And just so that we're clear on everything, we do have your house surrounded. I warned you that you needed to leave your house two days ago. And I said if you didn't, that we'd kill you. But I'm still gonna give you one last chance to just go about your lives. But this time, no weapons. Just the clothes on your backs and a pack of food and your hands up. You have five minutes to pack. It's only been two weeks. Is it already the Lord of the Flies? You made my offer. What's your decision? Yeah. How do we know you're not going to just shoot us when we walk out? Okay, that's a fair question. I'm going to be direct with you. You don't know my name, but you'll know who I am when I say that I was your UPS guy. Which is how I know that you have some pretty extensive supplies in there. Look, I know that you're a decent guy, and I'll be honest, I don't like seeing people have to die. But I'm even less of a fan of dying myself, and I'm not going to risk my or any of my guys' lives trying to force you out of there. If you stay, we're just going to burn down your house with you in it. Either you're going to run out, and we're going to snipe you down for being a pain in our butt, or you can just burn in there. Now, no one out here wants that because if your house burns, then there's going to be less stuff worth all of this effort. And I'm sure that you don't want that because then you'll be dead. So let's call it four minutes left. The clock's ticking. Make your decision and let's get the show on the road. Let's just walk out of here now. We'll figure it out. They don't seem like they want to hurt us. They don't sound crazy. No, they don't sound crazy, they sound smart. Did you hear what he said? We can walk out here with food, but no weapons, and we gotta walk out with our hands up? They're just trying to make it look like we have an escape route, so we'll walk out of here without a fight. They're not gonna let us out, out of here without shooting us, though. They put us out there with just a little bit of food, and in a couple of days we'll be back here trying to steal everything back from them. They'd be on edge just like we were. Now, they're not gonna let us do that. They're just trying to trick us out instead of burning us out. What do we do then? He's right. I actually don't know how to fight with no, this. We can't trust him. We can't trust him. How do we even know there's more than one person out there? It could just be him. All right. What's your decision? I said, what's the decision? What are you doing? You gave us five minutes. That was your two-minute warning. What do we do? We just need more time. We just need more time. We're out of time. What do we do? Where's 911 when you need them?
What are you doing? No one's gonna come and help us. Grab your bag, start packing. We're leaving? What? The decision? I feel as though this morning could have gone better, maybe. I, I think I just didn't have a plan for it. You know, I'm glad we got out with our lives. We're not dead, but uh, we're really no better off than we would have been if we had just left. And uh, yeah, once we, once we got out to what Monica felt was kind of a safe distance, I headed back to check out, like see if like the guys are just scattered you know, see if there was anything maybe we could go back to, scrounge, you know, even just from the shed, but the, the place is just a total loss, just incinerated, melting mess, you know, unless we're looking for ashes. <laughs> you know, there's nothing there, so, uh, yeah. What we're doing now is we're heading over to get the bucket. We dropped, I'm glad we've got that, but otherwise we're back to square one and really it's my fault because I wasn't prepared for any of this I mean I, I, I did some things that felt like I was preparing you know I, I laid the traps not, I, well, not traps the trip lines and stuff but you know doing shit isn't the same as getting shit done I did it I did a bunch of shit but Anyway, we we gotta move. We gotta go grab the bucket. I guess set up camp. Back to square one. Today is day seven, seventeen. Today's day seventeen. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, Monica's grabbing some, some water from the stream right now. Um, my job is there's just so many bugs here. We're going to start a small fire. That'll get the bugs down because um, they're just really awful right now. And, um, yeah, I uh, also on the way out, uh, uh, speaking of fire, we, we saw a bunch of people's firewood. I, it was like a, a camp where people had been collecting it. I didn't see anywhere nearby. We grabbed, I didn't grab any firewood because, I mean, that firewood's, I mean, it's all over the place here, <laughs> um, but uh, I just, I grabbed the tarp, and it made me realize I, I never had any plastic sheeting or any, or tarp or anything in my, in my everyday carry bag, you know, or, uh, uh, and we didn't put any in that bucket either. I had some in, in some, like, camping bags, but I, I didn't grab any of those when we ran out. It was just, you know, bag, whatever we had on us, and that was it. Uh, I felt a little unprepared uh, in that regard, but I'm glad we came across that, I mean, because we could have worked without a tarp, but it makes it a lot easier. So, anyway, I was going to start a fire. Ah, on the way, on the way uh, walking yesterday, I grabbed just a bunch of this. It's a white birch bark. Uh, this stuff burns super, super easily. It's like a, there's a natural wax in it. Uh, I didn't, when I found like a tree, there's plenty of them around here. I just peel off what was kind of hanging off of it. Uh, you know, if you peel off too much, you can kill the tree. I don't want to do that. I mean, there's no need. There's plenty of it. So, um... So I, I collected this, and it'll make it really easy to start a fire here. Ugh. 
All right. So the next step after this, and I, I'm going to have to tend this pretty uh, continuously uh, while it uh, whew, uh, while it begins, because this is going to have uh, a real tendency to uh, to put itself out. You know, with all this wet stuff, I'm going to have to keep coming over here and blowing on it. But the next thing that I'm going to be whew, that's a lot of smudging. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to be working on is uh, putting a shelter together because. Uh, that will help if you know it starts raining or anything, and the tarp is going to be super helpful for that. So I'm recording my thoughts again. Um, I'm not sure why we're out here and what our goal is really. You know, there is a hospital we could have gone to, and I think that might have been a better plan. And I really don't know what we're doing out here. I'm not sure that it's safe at all. And that's that. Pretty simple, very rudimentary, but it'll keep us dry if it rains tonight. It'll, it's even going to keep the, the wind from blowing around us. It'll help to keep some warmth in there. Is it as good as my house? Absolutely not, but it's a hell of a lot better than nothing. Uh, I'm going to run some stones in the fire today, warm them up. We can bring warm stones in there. Really need a good night's sleep tonight because we did not sleep at all last night. And then we just start making this kind of a, I don't want to say a new home, but we need to start establishing this as a camp until we can figure out what we're going to do next. And one of the first order of businesses along those lines is food. We've only got so much in that bucket, and uh, I know a lot of wild edibles, but there are not a lot of calories out here in the woods, unless you start hunting and trapping. And as a vegetarian, it's not that surprising that I don't, I don't have an enormous amount of experience with that. You gotta do what you gotta do. Home sweet home. Put this guy in here. Let's see, how would that work? It goes in there. Ground's still a little soft here. Let's see if it'll work. Okay, I guess that's one. I'm gonna take this pine cone and I'll gently attach it to this, uh, this stick here. And then if something comes out and it's interested, this gets put, maybe I should test it once. I guess it works. Okay, I'm gonna reset that and then uh, I'm gonna set a few more traps around the area. Finding quite a few of these little red efts. I kind of think that they are toxic, though, or bad for you. I, I, all the, a lot of these brightly colored animals are oftentimes have a really foul taste or something like that. So I know I don't know. So I'm not going to mess with it. Plus, they're so cute. They're so cute. horror 
of what I just did over the last couple of hours. I uh, was stalking animals, setting traps and everything like that, and I managed to get this poor little angel of a bird here. Uh, I ended up throwing a, a stick at it. It was disoriented from being hit by the stick. I stomped on it. I guess I broke its neck. There's not a lot of meat on here. I mean, even a robin or a blue jay would have been better than this. You know, not to, I mean, you died. I appreciate your sacrifice. But, uh, you know, I wish it was a little bit bigger. But I'm going to go over and prepare it by the fire. And then uh, I guess we'll, we'll cook it up in a soup or something like that. I feel bad about it, though. Normally I'm a vegetarian, but... Uh, you know, in a crisis, you have to adapt. <sighs> Poor little thing. Okay, so what we've got here is uh, just the breast muscles, and there's not that much of it. It's just a tiny bit, but it, there is food here, and, you know, it's... It, I'm not just going to throw it away because it's so little. I mean, it's, it's pretty much one bite of food, but that's one bite of food. So what I'm going to do next is use my stick here and put it through the middle of... The, uh, the body here, kind of like up through the cavity, up through where the neck is, or, you know, the neck used to be. Now it's like, kind of like toasting a marshmallow. I'm going to put it over the fire, and I'm going to burn off all those feathers. This is actually, this is actually cooking the meat as well. Instead of taking that sparrow body and boiling it and trying to separate out the meat and everything like that, I, I just ended up roasting it. I roasted it, I took the meat off of the bone that way. You know, did I get it? absolutely everything? No, but I think it just would have been so onerous to have gone through the process of boiling it and then trying to separate that and everything like that. Uh, and you know, we're kind of hungry, so uh, instead I just roasted it and I put it in here uh, with some rice that we had in the bucket that we dropped, some salt that we had in the bucket that we dropped, and I looked around for wild edibles and I, I didn't find anything really that I recognized except for a jack in the pulpit. And I wasn't sure whether Jack in the Pulpit was inedible or not because I, I don't really have any experience with it. Uh, but fortunately, I brought this book with me. This is something I keep all the time in my EDC pack. Uh, and I was able to look it up and I was able to confirm that it's good that we didn't pick the Jack in the Pulpit and try to eat it because there is toxicity to it. I guess with Jack in the Pulpit, if you dry out the roots or something along those lines, you can, um, you know, you can, you know, eat them at that point once. They're dry, they lose the toxicity, I'm not sure. I'm going to read more about it because there are some Jack in the Pulpit here and that's apparently a food source if we treat it in a certain way. But at least right now, I wasn't able to throw it in. So I'm glad I was able to confirm that before we poisoned ourselves. So anyway, all that's in here. It's not much, but it's something. And I'm going to take it, place it right in the fire and let it boil for a while. And once the rice is all uh, you know puffed up and it's been boiling and sanitized and it's all safe to eat, It'll at least be something. You know, do I wish we had more? Absolutely. Uh, I guess I'll be going around checking out my traps and see if I caught anything that way. But I'm glad we have something. Although in the long run, we're going to need to get more than just sparrows. Is there anyone out there? Hello? Is there anyone out there? Hello? Is there anyone there? Roger that, I copy you. This is 119 EDC, 119 Echo Delta Charlie. This is Monica. I, I... What's going on in your area? Uh, we're out in the woods. Some people tried getting into our house and so we're just in the woods now. Where are you located at? Um, I'm not exactly sure where we are. We're in New England. Are you anywhere near here? Wow, you're far away. I'm in Centralia, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's not anywhere near here at all. Ever since all of this has went down, all of the TV stations, internet, everything's been out. News is only word of mouth. We believe that the aliens, or whatever they are, must have set off an EMP. Luckily, my buddy had some electronics in a Faraday cage too, uh, including this radio that I'm on. And I was afraid that even though this radio was protected in a, in a cage, I was afraid that uh, the repeaters wouldn't be working. So I'm stumped how we can reach each other so far away. But it's been crazy here too. We're, I'm stuck here in central Pennsylvania. I'm not even at home. 
I'm stuck in a buddy's house. We were on a camping trip when all of this started making the news and we at least made it to his house before all the cars and the electronics and everything else shut down. But we're hearing that the aliens targeted the government buildings and military bases, major bridges and, and, and stuff like that. But uh, it's been getting, the people have been getting crazy. You know, honestly, after the initial attacks from the aliens, people are now more of the danger than what the aliens are. And let me tell you about what happened just yesterday. Excellent guys, while you guys are finishing up here, while the bread is cooking, I'm gonna go out to the shed, I'm gonna get a couple buckets for that second water purifier that we need. Good, okay. Get your hands up, get your hands up, come on. I want all your food, I can smell your food from here. Come on, come on, get over here, get over there. Get over there, get back, get back. Man, I can smell you cooking something. I want it, and I want everything you've got in the house, or I'm gonna put one right in your head. Do you understand me? Do you get me? Hey, man, I don't want any problems, man. I don't want any problems. I'll give you whatever you want. No, give it to me now. Come on, let's go. Hey, man, you know, he went out there by himself. I think I'm gonna go check on him. Yeah, do that. I'll get this finished up, and I'll see you out there in a few. All right, buddy, be right back. All right. Hey, hey, drop it! Dude, all I want is some food. If you don't give me your food, I'm gonna blow your friend's- Hey, what's that sound? Where's it coming from? I don't know, man, but it sounds like it's all around us. Thank you. Yep, just keep an eye out for me, or for us. I'm not sure if he's gonna be coming with me or not. Oh, that's good little, that yeah. fine little stuff burns really well. Um, I was able to make contact with the people at that hospital again. Oh, yeah. They, they said that uh, we could still go there if we wanted. Hmm. They have plenty of supplies and they seem to be safer in numbers. Yeah. Well, before, you know, we didn't know if they were the people trying to trick us out of the house. And I mean, I guess maybe they're, they're not that because those people are, it seem mostly dead, but uh, I don't know, there's just no way of knowing whether it's some other kind of a trick. I mean, there's a bunch of cannibals hanging out at a hospital. I really, I highly doubt that. I okay, mean, well, maybe that's a bit extreme. But, yeah. Uh, but still, I mean, how do you know you can trust them? I mean, people say anything. They can sound pretty convincing. Right, but, you know, we don't have anything out here. I mean, firewood. But if they have food, it's a better chance. Well, I think we're going to do better with the traps that I set. I mean... At some point, they're gonna catch something, and I feel like I'm getting a little bit better with the hunting thing. I don't know, I just don't wanna go walk into a trap after we just escaped from one. I'm sorry I had to disappear like this, but I thought it would be better if I just slipped off. First, I wanted to thank you for taking me in and taking care of me these past weeks. You didn't need to do that, and I appreciate it. I might have died if you hadn't helped me, and I'm sorry that I held a gun to your head. I headed for that group at the hospital in Greenville. I know it's a risk going there, but it's a risk staying out here too. And even if it is safer to just hide from the world, I wouldn't want to live out the rest of my life being completely isolated. 
I took two granola bars and a water bottle to get me to Greenville. I feel bad about taking it, but I'll need the energy to get there. And if you look on the bright side, everything in that bucket is now yours. I'm also taking the rifle, and I do feel bad about that. I'm sorry. I hope you don't hate me, but if you change your mind and come to the hospital, I'll keep an eye out for you, and I'll let them know that you're one of the good guys. So that's it. Thank you for saving my life. Monica. I can't blame Monica at all for deciding to leave and go look for those people that said they had a really, really great setup. I don't agree with that decision. Obviously, I'd rather put my, my faith in myself and my own skill set uh, and you know, my own good fortune and luck uh, than put my faith in some question mark off somewhere. Um, but I'm not going to criticize her decision. I think everyone has to make their own decision. And my decision uh, for now is to move my camp. Uh, if the people that Monica contacted are not as they represented themselves, if they're just a small group and they're looking for people uh, to extract resources from, I don't want Monica to be compelled to, you know, say that she was with someone else, myself, and that I had resources, and have that group come looking for me at my camp. So I've decided I've broken down my camp, and I'm heading out to a new location somewhere. The place where, we, where Monica and I had been, well, there wasn't anything special or magical about that anyway. So... They're very well maybe better places, you know, somewhere else anyhow. So I, I, you know, I'm not shedding any tears over losing the camp. Uh, while I'm moving, I'm going to be doing something a little bit differently than I had done in the past. When Monica and I were fleeing from my burning shell of a homestead, uh, there was a fair degree of urgency. We just wanted to move, move, move and get as much distance between that and all those people and us as possible. Uh, at this point, I feel like there's a a lot more time for me so what I'm going to be doing is implementing some counter tracking measures where I'm going to try to prevent people from being able to or at least easily able to follow where I've gone. Now if there was a professional tracker on my trail none of the stuff that I'm doing here would do anything more than possibly slow them down. But for a layperson or someone that just has some basic tracking skills there are a lot of things that you can do to make your trail harder to follow and I'm going to be doing a lot of those things today as I move through this wilderness towards I don't know what, <laughs> but we'll find out. I've been traveling all day and I think it's time to get some rest for the evening. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit cool out, but I don't think I'm going to do a fire. You know, if I was going to do a fire, one way of kind of hiding it to mask the fire is to dig kind of a pit in the ground and have the fire down inside of the pit, put stones around it to keep the light from shooting out through the woods. But an even better way of avoid, avoiding being seen is to not have a fire at all. And I think I'm, I'm fine doing that tonight. So I'm just going to set up a really primitive camp. I'm going to pull out the tarp, just prop it up with a couple of sticks so, you know, if it drizzles or rains, I'm not going to get wet. Uh, and, uh, and then I'm going to head out tomorrow. As I've been going out today, there's been a lot of this sandy terrain here, and I don't know if my ears are playing tricks on me, but I, I think, I think I'm here in the ocean up ahead. So that'd be kind of interesting. Uh, you know, if there is ocean out here, that could present a lot of opportunities for food that I could gather right off the landscape, you know, crustaceans and things of that nature. Um, it might present some challenges for getting uh, fresh drinking water, uh, you know, because of the salt and everything, but we'll face that challenge tomorrow and, uh, and see what we've got. But, uh, I think I did pretty well traveling today. I don't think that I've been followed. I think that this whole, uh, this whole endeavor of trying to cover up my trails was hopefully unnecessary, but it makes me feel a lot better just knowing that I'm leaving all that trouble from yesterday behind me and I get a fresh start tomorrow, possibly with an ocean horizon. I am feeling really good this morning. I got a really good night's sleep, and I don't know if it's because the ground is kind of soft and sandy, or because the temperature was just perfect last night, uh, or maybe just feeling like I have a fresh start because I didn't leave any tracks behind me, but Whatever the reason, I slept really great. I'm feeling really great today. And I, I got up and I did do a little bit of checking around in the area. And it seems like this is a vacation town, a vacation community. We, we are near the beach right here. Uh, and as far as I can tell, there's no one here. I, I didn't see any cars. I didn't see any tracks from anybody. 
around here, and I'm not sure why that is. I uh, well, it, <laughs> it might have something to do with this uh, up there, possibly. I uh, I don't know whether that's been here since day one or whatever, but I mean it's been here since I got here, and uh, yeah. So, but whatever, you know. I mean, I, I I've had a lot more trouble with like a-hole people since this thing began than, than these guys. So if that's keeping people away, you know, that's great because there are a lot of resources here which are ripe for the picking. Uh, and, you know, there's uh, crustaceans, fish, and, uh, you know, fresh water is going to be a little bit of a challenge perhaps. But, uh, you know, I'm overall just really psyched. And it's great to have this place to myself. I mean, that's what they always say. You know, if you're going to go to the beach, you don't go on Labor Day or Memorial Day. It's like you wait for an alien invasion you know, <laughs> to clear out the crowds a little bit, and uh, and that's the way you do it. So, I'm at, I'm psyched. I'm psyched. Um, and the only again, the only thing I really have to work on is just fresh water resources because the water here is salt water, and you know without fresh water, none of this awesome stuff is going to seem all that rosy in in pretty short order. So, priority number one right now is to get some uh, some fresh water going. And I think I have the tools and, more importantly, the know-how to extract fresh water from salt water. This location could work out really, really well. I've already gone around and I've found a lot of mussels and clams and things like that for food. There are seabirds here, though at the moment I'm not sure how on earth I would catch those, but I'm sure I can figure it something out uh, and even out here there are a lot of these boats and you know there's a potential I could go out to these guys and maybe there's some fishing gear on board I could get one of them out yeah I don't know about the motor boats but the sailboat certainly get them out and and do some fishing this seems like it was some kind of like a small vacation community and uh, as far as I can tell there's nobody here at the moment but this could also be a potential bug out location for some people some people might be on their way here so there might be competition for all these resources at some point but at the moment Yesterday was kind of a, a rough day. Obviously, I got chased off the beach down in town there. You know, I, I can't be surprised. That was a great resource there, and the idea that there would be other people there uh, is not at all surprising. Uh, as I was running off the beach, you know, running over sand, I, I kind of sprained or, or at least strained my ankle. I injured my ankle. So, uh, you know, I was kind of hobbling out of there. But uh, after a while, I don't think they were chasing me. Uh, the people there. I think they just wanted me out of their their space, you know, I mean, because they didn't know who I was. And, you know, I thought about either going back, I mean, I've got the Glock on me, but it's like, I'm just one guy with a Glock. I don't know how many people were in there. But, you know, even with that, it's like, I don't want to threaten anybody, you know, because then I'd become the marauder. You know, I then I'd be the bad guy, you know, because they're set up down there. You know, I, and I should really just leave them be. I mean, the other thing that flashed in my head is like, should I take like a white flag or something and go back? Because I mean, it'd be nice to team up with people. But it's like, again, I don't know them. I, you know, it would just take one shot, me walking up to their house, wave my white flag, they could just shoot me right in the chest or really anywhere without medical aid. And you know, you know, I'd be dead. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I decided to just split. Um, and, you know, I hobbled out of town. You know, my, my ankle's still bothering me. Uh, you know, I'm hoping it's not anything major, but uh, on the way out, I, uh, I did stop somewhere. I, um, I saw a house and they, they had a, there's a garden behind it. And like all the, the food was just rotting on the vines there, which made me think, you know, people are not at this house because, you know, they would have eaten that stuff. So I checked it out and the, the garden didn't really have any food so much anymore. It was just stuff, like I said, rotting off the vines, but that was good because it was just all this, all these seeds. So I collected as much as I could in terms of seeds. Yeah, I bet I can use those later on. They're all, all different kinds of plants. I'll, I'll go through those later, but um, uh, yeah, there was just a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, and then I, I decided to, you know, test my luck with the house, you know, because it seemed like there, there weren't people there, otherwise they would have eaten the stuff. And I, I got in and it was kind of a treasure trove actually. There was a lot of food in the, the cupboards. In fact, it 
I was thinking it was gonna be kind of a problem, like how am I gonna carry this stuff? Cause I just got my black backpack, but I found some duffel bags. So I was filling up the duffel bags. Um, but you know, even those are gonna be awkward, uh, I was thinking, but I found an awesome, an awesome find. Uh, I got a, uh, a frame backpack, like one of those old school ones, like with the metal, metal exterior frame that they had down in the basement. And that thing is awesome. It is just so, it can hold so much more than the black like tactical pack that I'd had. I mean, the, the pack I had, it looked cool. and had lots of different pockets, but it really couldn't hold that much stuff. I mean, it was like bursting at the seams just with the stuff that I'd, I'd had from the, uh, the bucket that uh, Monica and I had stashed. So uh, yeah, the frame pack is just awesome. And it's so much more ergonomic. Uh, on my shoulders, it feels great. So I'm really happy to have that. The other thing that I found, and it was, I'm glad that I found, I, a pot, <laughs> a real pot. Uh, I found this, uh, you know, in their, in their kitchen. And uh, at the moment I found it, I realized I had also left my, my little metal cup back, you know, distilling water back there. Cause I just, I, I ran out of town. I didn't grab it. So um, it was kind of, I was like, kind of like elated and then like realizing how depressed I would have been if I had, <laughs> if I had realized I'd, I'd forgotten the metal, metal can right away. But, uh, yeah, so that's great. I, I, I've got food, I got a lot of juice and it's been 23 days. I did the math. It's been 23 days since the aliens thing happened and juice is kind of a nice treat. It, it was the, the kind you don't have to refrigerate. It was just in their cupboards. So I, I got a, a couple of those, and those are also going to be really useful uh, bottles, um, you know, after I empty them out because they can hold water. Uh, I also got some uh, some jugs, uh, empty jugs, out of the recycle bin, so I got those, and I'm going to be using those today to collect up some water. Now, down in the valley here, uh, there there is uh, some water down there, and I'm, I'm going to be accessing that, but it's it's still salty. Uh, it's, it's, it's still a salty water. Uh, it's kind of brackish. It's, we're not that far from the the ocean still so um, I'm gonna be uh, going down there I'm gonna get some of that salt water and I wanted to still that and I can't really build another one of those solar stills at least not here because under the forest canopy there's just not enough Sun uh, to make it work and I, I, I don't want to go looking for a field back down there and get shot by you know one of those people so um, I'm gonna stay up here but I can uh, use wood uh, fuel to uh, to distill water so I'm gonna be uh, preparing for doing that today. I'm going to get some water and uh, the way that I'm going to do it actually is using some trash that I found uh, on the outskirts of town on the way out. Uh, it was a real find. It was like one of those places where people like dump shit that they don't want to uh, you know pay to recycle at a transfer station you know like mattresses and uh, you know all sorts of stuff. That was like a treasure trove of all sorts of little things you know bags, containers and stuff. I, I grabbed a bunch of different things. In particular I grabbed uh, some metal uh, refrigeration uh, tubing that was in the back of like a refrigerator. I, I pulled that stuff out and I think I can use that for doing some uh, water distilling. So uh, using fuel instead of uh, the sun's natural free energy. Uh, so a little bit more work but at least I can do it under the canopy of the forest and everything. So that's my plan for today is to fill up all my water bottles uh, using a different technique for distilling water. I would not categorize yesterday as being a particularly successful day. The Dakota fire hole worked fine, but that device that I made for distilling the water, it worked in the end. I ended up shortening up the, the metal tube a little bit so that I was able to uh, get the steam going through. I think uh, there was too much pressure with that much tube there, and a lot of the steam was escaping through the, the cloth I shoved in there. Uh, so I shortened up the tube, and I was able to get some water out, but optimistically, maybe, maybe I got two cups of water. Probably not. Uh, and, and look what I'm drinking this morning, is juice. And I spent like all day yesterday working on that thing for a couple of cups of water. So that, that wasn't, that wasn't cool. And, um, and additionally, you know, I know that the Dakota Fire Hole is great at, you know, having less smoke, but... Still, you know, I was sending some smoke up in the air, and it's like a day after I spooked these people down in the valley. So, I didn't sleep great last night. I feel like I probably should have left this area and, uh, you know, just headed away from here. And I think that's what I'm going to do today. Not, not just because I'm, I'm still nervous about these people in the valley and the smoke I sent up yesterday, but also because, um, well, just getting water down here is just, it's, it's too much of a thing. It's just, it's really difficult. 
And um, you know, if I keep going up, uphill, I, sh I mean, I'm sure I'll, f I'll find a stream or something like that. So today, that's my deal: is I want to get some distance between me and them, and I want to get easier access to some fresh drinking water. Uh, my ankle this morning, when I woke up, uh, was pretty swollen. It still is swollen. Uh, you know, I, I'm trying to keep the weight off it as best I can, but. You know, just out and working and stuff like that, it's hard to be completely off it. And especially if I'm going to be hiking today, this uh, this blocking stick, as great as it was yesterday, it's it's not really cutting it. Um, so I'm thinking what I need to do today is I, I've got to make uh, I got to make some crutches that I can really get all the weight off this leg because I can't afford for this thing not to heal pretty quickly. I need this leg back. It is not working out, not being able to use it. So so that's the first thing I'm going to be doing this morning is I got to make crutches and then uh, get the hell out of here. not the most enjoyable walk that I've done in the past month or so. Uh, these, these crutches are really helpful, but uh, just going over this uneven terrain, my foot is catching on things, you know, oftentimes one crutch will go down into a soft spot, it'll destabilize me. Uh, and also, I, I never ended up uh, padding these out. I had some cloth that I could have, but uh, not padding them out, also, I wasn't able to reinforce them. I think that was a mistake. I'm going to make some other ones and actually actually uh, pad them out to help hold them together because they're splitting just under my weight. So, live and learn. Uh, the reason I was reluctant to do it is because I've, I've got some cloth, but I didn't want it to get all mangled up on these because it's like, you know, clothing and stuff that I took from the, the house down there. But, um... Yeah, overall, I it just sucks being on your own doing this kind of stuff. I'm kind of missing Monica now. I had the radio on. It's on the last frequency she was calling out on. Just wondering if I would hear from her or hear from them and I can ask about her. Whatever, I'm just wondering how she's doing. It just sucks to be on your own doing this stuff. Because, like, you know, any little thing and... Uh, there's nobody to... Tropical Cori yeah. from West Michigan. I'm trying to contact with anybody in the area. Hey, this is practice prepper. I am so glad to get somebody on here. I've been trying for the same time every day, just hoping. Occasionally I get a little chatter, but we haven't been able to connect. This is fantastic. Well, it's nice to hear from you too. So, where are you located, Praxis Prepper? I'm in New England. Where were you located? Yep, we're in West Michigan. So, give me a little intel. How has things been in your area? It's total collapse here. Do you know anything concrete about what's going on? Well, we don't know a lot, I have to admit. When the AI event happened, that's what we call the alien invasion, uh, we were here at home. We were babysitting both of our grandkids. Um, and my youngest son was at home with us. And all of a sudden, looked up, saw these ships over the metro area, very confused. And then, had to be an EMP. We lost electricity and gas and water, just all at once. You know, I'm a prepper. I should have been prepared for this. And, you know, no matter how hard you try, I don't think you're ever prepared for an event like this. Um, I had enough food storage for a year or possibly longer for three people, which is my household size. But now we're up to five adults and five children, and I'm hoping to make that food supply last at least three months. And that really changes the game. And the chickens, that's something else to think about. I always have enough feed um, and cracked corn to last at least three months. 
but here's my concern if this AI event happens all summer long and into the fall and winter what am I going to do in the winter I mean they can't forage so I have one of these cages from an old fruit tree that I made so my husband and I are going to use this and make a temporary pen that we can move around for our five chickens so they can get a lot of good earthworms and green grass and other weeds and hopefully supplement enough of their feed that we will be able to keep our layer mash and our cracked corn for the winter in case this still is going on. Well, I should sign off. I'm, I'm trying to keep positive, you know, positive outlook for everyone because it's really, really hard on my grandkids. They keep asking me, you know, when will mommy and daddy meet us? And, you know, I just have to say they're at home and they're safe in their basement and that's where they need to stay. But I don't know if they're safe. I, oh, I'm telling you that not knowing can drive you crazy. So we can only do our best. And I really appreciate this talk and being able to talk to somebody else. And I hope we can kind of establish a network where we could all check in, maybe at a uh, certain time. Well, thank you, Practice Prepper, and be safe. Good luck to you, too. That's what I'm talking about. You know, they got a group. There's something to be said for that. Well, I, I don't think those people down from town are necessarily following me, but better safe than sorry. I'm gonna try to put in some more hours of hiking before the end of the day. Steve, you there? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I found him. Okay. Well, what are you gonna do? What do you think? Today's day 25. Yesterday I hiked as much as I could but my crutches started to fall apart, like splitting up at the top. And um, I, in the end, I ended up uh, putting the padding on, binding them up, because not only does the pad of cloth uh, make it more comfortable, but also kind of holds it together to keep it from splitting. So I, I sacrificed uh, my least favorite shirt that I picked up at that house and, uh, and wrapped it up around there. So that should reinforce the crutch. Uh, I, I managed to go what I, I hope was a couple more miles uh, and that brought me here. I've got my leg elevated all last night. It's still really really swollen this morning, worse than yesterday, so I think I, I feel like I just need to not move today, just keep it elevated f just for one day because I feel like if I just keep going on it I'm gonna it's gonna be a bad situation. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, but if I just keep letting this thing swell up I don't know it's not going to be good. So uh, I'm just here and I feel like I'm wasting my day away. <sighs> you know, wasting my resources while I'm not accumulating or collecting anything new, but it sucks. But yeah, so I'm just here. I'm elevating my leg and uh, yeah, I'm just here for the day. Yesterday feels like an enormous waste of time. I I was here all day and I I tried to be light on resource use. I, I didn't touch any of my juice that I'd gotten from that house, but I, I did finish up all the water. And uh, I, I woke up this morning and my my ankle it's not it's not any better than it was the other day. I was really hoping I was gonna wake up and the swelling would be going down, but it's not. And I don't know, I mean, should I spend another day here? It just seems like a waste of time. I'm running through resources. 
I'm not collecting anything. Monitor this group of frequencies for 26 more seconds. Repeat, this is LTAP scanning. Hello, this is, uh, this is Praxis. My name is Tyler, and I'm talking to you from a small town in the Pacific Northwest, where we've been completely surrounded by the alien invaders pretty much since it started. I'm calling you from a safe house for the cyber activist group Synonymous. They turned this room into a sort of Faraday cage, and I found this box labeled Tactical Ham. So I opened it thinking, Well, inside of it was this device that seems to monitor ham radio frequencies, and that's how I'm talking to you now. How are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm, I'm just calling you on a, a ham radio. Uh, it's pretty much all I have after I blew up my house. It's a long story. Wow, it sounds like you've been through a lot, Praxis. I'm sorry to hear about your losses. Uh, things have been quite a bit different here. The military put our town under martial law as soon as they knew about the aliens. And when the aliens arrived, there was a massive air battle and then an electromagnetic pulse. And we've been completely cut off ever since then because the aliens form sort of a ring around our town and they vaporize anybody who tries to leave or who tries to fight them. Things were pretty much just pure chaos in the few days following that. The military was in disarray and tried to regroup at gun stores and warehouses to keep those places from being overrun. And when people realized that they couldn't get anything at these places, they just diffused into the neighborhoods. And that's where a lot of the panic and fighting and killing happened. The next few days were just really ugly because there was a lot of fighting and a lot of people were dying from the fighting and just in hospitals, people who lacked medication that they needed. And everybody was just in a horrible mood, even if they had food, because it was just so stressful and everybody was panicking. Uh, but I was fortunate enough to be able to go to my friend's house. She uh, lived alone and was happy to have somebody there to help watch her back. And she's sort of a small homesteader, like a lot of people in this area. And so we were able to just lay low with the supplies that I had in my car and that she already had and some of the small animals that she kept. Uh, we were able to just lay low and stay out of a lot of the fighting and the desperation of those first few days. In fact, Praxis, things have been stable enough here that there's been a little bit of a barter economy growing where people have enough food to trade some of it or trade it for other things that they need like bullets or medicine. In fact, my friend and I have been doing pretty well for ourselves between the skills that we have to offer for other people and a large quantity of quail that live in the woods behind our house and which we're able to catch pretty regularly. And then when we're done processing the quail, we can take them to the next neighborhood over where there's sort of a barter market that's already sprung up. And it's pretty crazy to see what people want to trade there. Uh, we've been doing pretty well for ourselves, obviously, because fresh meat is always in high demand in a situation like this. But, you know, things like firearms, gasoline, water filters um, have been just the top shelf items and obviously things like medications like ibuprofen and then you know cigarettes and alcohol just vice items uh, are worth more than their weight in gold uh, because obviously people can't eat gold and that's not as popular as more practical items right now uh, it's just been really crazy seeing this barter economy and i i wish it was something that i knew more about before all of this. All right, Praxis, it looks like times are changing out there. Uh, I'm gonna try to take this tactical ham unit with me, but I've gotta get out. So I hope I hear from you again, sir. Godspeed out there. It is really cold this morning. Uh, I spent the rest of the day yesterday here and my, the swelling in my ankle has actually gone down just a little bit this morning. Maybe it's the cold, maybe it's the two days of elevating it, but I got a decision today. I mean, do I get up and start moving again? Because I'm pissing through resources. I started going into my juice. I need to get more supplies. But I just invested two days in bringing down the swelling. If I start hiking again, am I going to... I don't know, am I going to like just make it all bad again? And, 
and it'll start swelling up. I mean, you know, when you're on the crutches, it's pretty much like a pendulum for your your ankle. So, I don't know. I, I was reading yesterday, I got this book from the, uh, the house, The Grapes of Wrath, which is pretty much a SHTF novel. I wish I had some more cheery reading. It's also kind of a heavy book to bring. I was questioning whether to carry it, but I guess I'm glad I had something to do. Uh, I'm just really cold this morning. I'm not sure what to do. I remember those guys. Bunch of fucking pricks. Today is day 28 and my ankle is feeling a lot better. I really lost a lot of time on that, you know, three day sabbatical I took there. But uh, it feels like it paid off. At the beginning of the day I was really being, uh, you know, kind of careful about not putting any weight on my, on my ankle still. but. Just after a while, it just started feeling all right. I, I started kind of, you know, being able to touch it down a little bit. And now I'm, I'm going easy on it, but it feels like I can kind of walk sort of, uh, sort of normally. So, um, yeah, yeah. What I'm doing now is just moving up into the hills, and the forest is already kind of turning into the kind of forest where I'm expecting to kind of come across some streams and things like that around here. So. Uh, yeah, it just seems like this is going to be a good spot. And what I'm looking for is just a really good place to kind of set up some sort of a some sort of a shelter. You know, I, I'm not so so far away from that that beach town still. That if you know, I I felt I needed to, I could go back there. And uh, and th this area could be all right. So I'm, I'm looking for a spot that has you know the criteria of a good. Uh, you know, sh camping shelter spot. Some place I don't have to worry about getting flooded. Some place where I'm not going to have a lot of wind blowing uh, around. Just a place where I can I can create a nice uh, sort of semi-permanent place to kind of regroup and uh, and figure out what my next step is going to be. And again, winter's coming, so I you know I need I need something. I'm also going to build a uh, a small kind of fireplace or wood stove. Uh, so I can keep warm, just uh, burning dead stuff. So I'm looking around and seeing what I can find that might work for a good ultimate shelter location. That's what we always said on television, right? Ultimate everything. Uh, I'm glad I got my ankle back. All right, here is a really good situation here. There's a big rock and it, it's protecting from the north. The morning sun comes into this area. There's this little notch with the tree there that I could even put a pole through to kind of support up the roof. The only thing that's tricky about this location is, well, is this rock here because it kind of feels like it would take up a lot of the, the uh, living space inside. But it, it has this kind of crevice here, which, I don't know, maybe that could be useful. I don't know, I guess overall I, I'm, I'm feeling like this place is pretty good. It's, it's close to water, but it's not at water level. It, um, it's elevated so that uh, rainwater is going to probably shed away. We've got good shelter from the north. Um, and also, nearby, there are a lot of good trees to, uh, to use for it here, so I wouldn't even have to carry stuff too far.
you're chopping down trees using either a machete or just a regular axe, uh, the easiest way to remove the most wood at a time and to get the thing separated from the ground is to chop in two directions. And I usually start by doing kind of a downward 45 degree angle kind of chop. And then you'll see that kind of feathers out the wood. And then what I do is I do another chop, chop that's sort of like parallel to the ground. And what you're doing is you're, you're first you're going down like this and then you're coming from the side like this, and that's chopping out little triangular wedges. If you just keep coming in from the same direction, those wedges really never get knocked out. But if you come down this way, and then from the sides, and then back, and then from the sides, you're slowly just chop, 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 and throwing all those wedges up and out of your way. It's also easy if you can kind of go around the periphery of the tree. And if it's a large tree, make sure you have some sense of which way it's gonna fall when it does fall. And when they are falling, remember trees can bounce and kick back at you. So as soon as it's going over, make sure you get out of the way. It can be very dangerous. This right here, this is exactly what I was talking about when I said if I just had heavier crutches, I could use those to hold up the, the main pole. What I'll be able to do is just run the main pole right through here. I'm gonna get another one to correspond to kind of stabilize it left to right. And between this and one more, uh, I've got the main poles for my, my lodge already. So this, this forest is really easy to work with and uh, my ankle's still, still feeling all right. One thing that I really like about building these sorts of primitive structures is that you're always working with materials that you have right on hand, right in the landscape, and I think it gives it a really nice quality to it. I know what I'm working for now is, you know, purpose and function, not so much the aesthetic of how it looks, but it, as it comes together, it does have a certain beauty to it because it's drawn right up out of the, the local environment. So I think it's great whenever you're you're doing any kind of a building, if you, you can take some, at least some materials from the local environment, it, it just gives it a real beauty, a real classiness, and uh, again, that's not what I'm working for today. I'm working on not freezing to death today, but, but still, it's, a, it's an aesthetic that you, know, you can appreciate even if uh, you know, there's maybe some other higher priorities. I'm just finishing up the fireplace area here right now, and I did a quick burn earlier, and I found that a lot of smoke was still coming back into the living space. And I, I looked in and I noticed that there were a lot of holes in the back of the fireplace uh, where air was able to get to the fire. And that gave it an awful lot of air. And then the smoke could kind of go up wherever it wanted to. And again, like I said, a lot of it was coming in the front here. I tried to patch up as many holes as I could, but I feel like if I patch up the holes in the back that are feeding air to the fire, and all the air that's gonna go to the fire has to go through the front, that's gonna create a natural draft that will prevent that smoke from coming out this way. So I'm taking a lot more mud, patching up the back, smoothing the sides up on the inside, and getting it so that there's one entrance and one exit so the air comes in the side and out the top. At this point, I feel like I have this shelter about as good as I'm gonna get it for the day today. I've got the walls basically covered up with the uh, you know, dirt and leaf material. I got the tarp over the top. The wood stove is not perfect, but it is, it's working all right. I'm not getting that much smoke back in here. I think one thing that I could do to improve it that I'll do later is maybe take some of that clay and make a smaller opening here. I, th I think the opening's just still too big. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna improve that uh, along with a lot of other things in here. But at this point, I've got some warmth on me. I don't have wind whipping across me. I am a lot more comfortable than I have been for many days now. So, so I'm appreciating this and being, you know, thankful for what I have at the moment. Uh, but there's a lot to do. Uh, at this point, I, I really got to assess what, I, what I've got, what I need to secure, you know, in terms of food and everything. And uh, this is a starting point. This isn't the finishing point. Uh, but it's, it's going to be a big day tomorrow.
Today marks day 30. It's been one month since this whole fiasco began, but I had a really good morning. Uh, I woke up to hearing the group of turkeys going through this area, and uh, I thought about trying to be quiet about taking one down, but I, uh, I just really wanted to get that meat. So I just popped off a shot, I got one of them. I decided not to do any more than that because I really don't know that much about what I'm doing. I'm gonna be processing and preparing the turkey today, but most of what I know is really just book knowledge. I've, you know, been a vegetarian for the past, you know, 10, 15 years or so, and uh, I don't know that much about, uh, you know, processing and preserving animal meat. So I'm going to try it on this one, do the best I can, but I, I wouldn't want to wipe out the entire group and lose all that resource. Turkeys tend to stay in the same area, so, you know, I'm sure we're going to cross paths again. So I figured it made the most sense to keep it alive. At this point I have the turkey completely cooked, and now is time to really prepare the individual ingredients of the pemmican for being turned into pemmican. And the two basic ingredients are really, really dried out meat and fat, rendered fat. Uh, I've got the bones and all the skin and everything in this pot, and I'm going to try to just cook that down until it's just fat. The idea is you want to get rid of the moisture and just have the fat left over. I don't know how much fat is really on this turkey. It's not like a, you know, a bison where there's you know giant chunks of like clear fat that you can separate out. I guess I'm going to give it a try. But independent of whether or not I'm going to be able to get enough fat out of this, I can certainly dry out the meat. And drying out the meat, and I even put some salt on it when I was cooking it, so drying and salting the meat uh, is going to make it last a lot longer than if I just, you know, left it without that. The ace that I have up my sleeve is this rack that I grabbed from that junk pile the other day. I think it's an old refrigerator shelf or something. I didn't want to use it when I was doing the water distilling to hold up the, up the pot because these bars are so thin. I was afraid that they would get destroyed by the, the high heat of that um, uh, Dakota fire hole that I'd created. But for this, just having it over a low fire, that, that's going to be a great use of this. So I'm going to set this down right here. And what I want to do is, uh, you know, just set everything up on here so that they can just slowly uh, bake away. I've got a bunch of the strips here. I've been uh, taking them, and you want to take the pieces of turkey and just break them up into the smallest pieces you really can that aren't going to fall through your rack. I'm just going to lay them out on here. And the idea here is to get them to a point where they will they'll kind of crackle in your hand. You can snap them. You don't want it to be bendable at all. You want these to be just completely dry to the point where they will crack in your hand. And um, actually kind of making them to the point where they're not particularly delicious anymore. But the nutrition will be kept in there. The calories will be kept in there. And I guess I'll take this and set that. And I just want that to do a low simmer. But this is going to take a while. It takes a long time for all the, the moisture to come out of these and for everything to render up, and um, actually, I'd probably be better with the lid off, because I'm trying to get the moisture out of there. Okay, so that's the deal. I have to have them sit here for quite some time, though, and uh, just dry out. Well, I've got the turkey drying over here and the fat's all rendering. I figured this would be a good opportunity since that's going to take a couple hours to catalog the food that I've got, uh, just so I have some sense of how many meals I have left. Uh, I have that pencil I had from earlier and just grabbed a check from my wallet. Don't think I'll be needing this. And uh, what I'm going to do, I've got a lot of these Mylar bags of food. I haven't used them much because I've been traveling a lot. Uh, and I, I don't want to open these because you know, it's starting to drizzle a little right now and I don't want to get moisture in here. Uh, but what I figured I'd do is just sort of mentally, visually grid them up into like meal-sized cubes and use multiplication to kind of figure out how many meals I have in there. I don't exactly know, you know, how many calories I need or, uh, you know, how many calories each of these foods is going to give me. That's information I just don't have access to right now. And information is a big thing that I feel like I'm lacking at the moment. Even doing that pemmican. Pemmican's a super simple recipe, but you know, even for that, I would have loved to have popped on a YouTube video prior to starting that process just to confirm that I'm doing it properly. You know, a month ago, that wouldn't have been any big thing, you know, just getting access to all that information. You just go, you know, online, on YouTube or whatever, and you can get all this 
knowledge and I don't have anything but what's in my head right now. I was trying to think about like what is actually the last YouTube video that I watched. It wasn't one on pemmican making, um, but it wasn't one on like the top 10 cutest dogs either. It was something sort of appropriate to my situation right now. It was a Canadian prepper video. And uh, you know, at the time when I was watching it, I didn't think that it was super relevant to me, but now it totally seems really appropriate to my situation. And it was about the idea of you know, as all of us preppers may be thinking that we were a lot more prepared than we really were for all this. I, uh, when I was watching it, I, I did not necessarily think that it was applying to me directly. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I want to talk about the difference between theory and reality when it comes to imagining yourself within a SHTF scenario. So obviously the discrepancy between these two things is going to dictate your survivability, meaning that if you have a lot of theoretical knowledge of SHTF and that greatly aligns with your realistic capabilities, then you're probably good to go. Even if you are aware of your shortcomings, so even if you're not prepared but you know you're not prepared, uh, that can be advantageous as well because you're going to know your limitations. And of course, in the lead up to whatever potential collapse may be coming, uh, you're going to be able to know which areas you need to hone in on. So you're not going to be deluding yourself into thinking that, you know, you're going to just be a security expert all of a sudden, or that you're going to be a professional gardener all of a sudden. So we all have our own delusions when it comes to our capabilities. This is why it's very important to take an honest look at what your strengths and weaknesses are. I'm sure there's a psychological term for this, but there's a tendency of people to block out uh, aspects of themselves they'd rather not look at. And I think when it comes to this kind of stuff, that might be areas where you really need to improve at. And for whatever reason, you just don't want to think about it, you repress it, you feel that you're going to rise to the occasion when it gets there. But I'm telling you, man, there's a lot of people out there, myself included, that if crap hit the fan tomorrow, I don't know how long I would make it. And if I don't know how long I would make it, and there's a bunch of people looking up to me to figure out how long they could make it, then <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of people who are in trouble. And I just say that honestly. You know, sure, any old middle-of-the-road prepper can survive weeks or even months off of their prepping supplies. But after that, in dealing with all the threats which may arise, including the different social threats, and we all know preppers aren't the most social of individuals so you got to take inventory of your capabilities just one sec I keep getting texts on my phone here there's something going on in the US in major cities look I'm getting a lot of alerts here anyways probably just the same old same old you know how it always is people overhyping it you know the collapse is gonna blindside us you know we're not gonna we're gonna least expect it and it's gonna happen and all of this you know we're gonna wonder um, how our fellow YouTube comrades are doing out there when it finally does happen. I've thought of making a video about that before of, you know, I wonder, you know, when, if and when the collapse happens. What are the people out there who I've never met, who I've interacted with on YouTube, how well they're going to fare? And, you know, maybe it'd be nice to set up some sort of ham network at some point, which uh, connected us all together. There's a thought for you. Anyways, I'm going to leave you with that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The last few pieces of turkey are coming off the, the grate here, and overall it's worked out pretty well. They've really crisped up to the point where they snap when you break them. All the moisture has been driven out, and between that and the salting, just this alone, without the fat or anything like that, forget pemmican, you know, this is going to you know, really preserve this stuff for a while. I'm still going to try to do a little pemmican, I guess, because... Uh, you know, I do have some fat, I want to preserve, you know, the calories in there, but I, I certainly don't think I have enough of it to do all of this stuff. So maybe, uh, you know, maybe it would work better with like bison or something where there's huge pieces of fat, but with this, it just doesn't seem like there's enough. But I feel really happy that I've been able to get these guys kind of uh, preserved so that I'm not going to be losing the calories and the nutrition in here. And overall, I'm feeling pretty shit.
Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.